A roller coaster of a hockey game results in a 4-3 loss for the Rangers in Montreal. We break down all the ups and downs of a wild shootout loss for the Rangers. Plus, was Bran often benched in the third period? You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 977 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. That song you're hearing right now is, of course, Leave the Lights On from our good friends in Pacifier. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL. Use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase, and we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. So a lot to cover in this one. It's a game where you're not really quite sure how to feel about it when it ends. There was a lot of the Rangers shooting themselves in the foot in this game, and you know, even as I say that, I realize that's an expression I don't really use that much anymore. I mean, to begin with, the Rangers they have an awesome record. They're among the best teams in the NHL, but even when they do lose, you typically have to just straight up beat them. You know, they're not going to beat themselves. There were times in this game I thought they beat themselves a little bit. We'll elaborate on that uh, a little bit later in today's episode. But then there were some good things in this game as well. I thought Will Cooley, Alexi Lafreniere both had excellent games. Um, you know, Vincent Trocek continues to produce points. And overall, you know, the Rangers, you know, had a, a nice comeback in this game. Down by three goals on the road. Forced the game into overtime. Not an easy thing to do, but they stuck with it. Ended up with a point. You know, you get a point in a situation where you're down by three goals on the road. More often than not, you take it. Um, but again, this one, it leaves you with kind of a, a bunch of uh, just mixed emotions, so to speak. And uh, we're going to break down exactly why that's the case uh, right here, right now. But first, uh, let's go ahead and go to kind of the big finish of this game. And then we'll get into some of the more nitty gritty details. Also want to talk about Brian Hoffman potentially uh, being benched in this game. Whole bunch of other stuff as well. Also going to get into uh, the reasons why I was not giving up hope uh, when the Rangers were down 3 nothing into this game. But to kind of go to the, the big finish here, game goes into overtime. Three to three, nonstop action during the three on three overtime period. Each team had a couple of different chances to win it, as is usually the case when it comes to three on three overtime hockey. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. There's a lot of space out there, and there's going to be at least a couple of good scoring chances. But among the better chances, we had a give and go between Trocek and Fox. Uh, Trocek to Fox, back to Trocek. Trocek sent a backhand shot just a little bit high. Uh, we also had a really nice play by Eric Gustafson behind the Ranger net in overtime. Uh, well, to begin with, he actually blocked a shot. Puck ends up behind the net, and he ends up stealing it away from Caulfield. And then he springs Mika Zibanejad out of the Ranger zone into the neutral zone with a nice long pass. Uh, Mika's up the right side, centers for Lafreniere. Save was made. Uh, Lafreniere got another chance. Mika went behind the net, got it back out in front to Lafreniere. Unfortunately, uh, he lost control of the puck when he was trying to bury it. So would have been nice to see him at least be able to get that shot away. Maybe the Rangers uh, could have won it right there. Then we had just a crazy ending of the overtime period. Keandre Miller has the puck behind the Rainer net. Slavkovsky is pressuring him and trying to get the puck away from him and basically does get the puck away, tries to take it in front of the net, and Miller takes a holding the stick penalty. Now, it's not ideal that Miller basically had his pocket picked here and that the Canadians were going to uh, get a scoring opportunity right at the end of overtime here that they probably shouldn't have had. But I will say, if there's ever a time to take a holding penalty, it might be here because, yeah, you know, you're going shorthanded for 11 seconds here and that is enough time. You know, the Canadians could win the game in that short amount of time there, but I'd rather that. I'd rather at least have the chance to regroup and be down a man here rather than, um, you know, have that great A golden scoring chance because Sapkowski was bringing it in front of the net. He was going to get a chance right there from the doorstep. So um, I don't know if Miller, you know, purposely did that or um, kind of just left it to chance whether he would get called for a penalty or not. But either way, it at least prevented the scoring opportunity uh, for the Canadians. So you know, timeout by Montreal. Again, 11.1 seconds to go here. Canadians about to have a four-on-three power play, as is the way it goes in overtime. And the Canadians win the face-off, but then Mika breaks up a pass, uh, goes in on the rush up the right side. He fakes a slap shot, ends up taking a wrist shot instead. Uh, the save was made, and then Truba comes up and just winds back and blasts a slap shot at the net. Save was made at the buzzer. And after watching the replay, yeah, this would have counted. If this had gotten by uh, Montebo. Uh, this this would have been in the net before time expired, and uh, Truba would have been the overtime hero. But 
Two very, very good saves by Sam Montebo at the end of the overtime period here to prevent the Rangers from getting a dramatic um, game-ending shorthanded goal. Uh, Montebo was outstanding on this night. We don't really uh, get too many examples anymore of the Rangers really getting goalied, at least not all that often, not as often as we used to. Um, and again, the Rangers could have played better in this game. We'll get into the details about that in a little bit here. Um, but yes, this is a true case of absolutely getting goalied. Uh, Montebo stopped 45 of 48 shots. He was every bit as good as those stats would suggest. Uh, was a little bit of a goaltender duel despite the 4-3 to three final. Uh, Jonathan Quick was very good as well. He at least gave the Rangers a chance. You know, Quick, after the game, was being interviewed, and he tried to kind of put this one on himself and, and said that, you know, maybe he should have come up with a couple of the saves that he didn't come up with. Um, you know, maybe, I, I guess you could at least say the goals that Quick allowed were stoppable, but if he stopped any of them, they would have been outstanding saves, and I'm sure he holds himself to that standard to, to make those outstanding saves. Um, I'm not going to put this one on Quick, though. I, I think the Rangers, again, shot themselves to the foot in, in times in this game. And, um, you know, again, quick played very well, stopped 27 of 30 shots. And this all set the stage for the shootout, all these uh, crazy fireworks at the end of the overtime period here. And the only player to score in the shootout was in the second round. He had Cole Caulfield. He went uh, wide to his left, snapped off a nasty shot into the far side under the glove. And um, that was the only goal of the three-round shootout. The Rangers, it's just not, you're not used to seeing them in a shootout, not have anybody score. Uh, Panarin went in. He went wide to his right, moved back to his left, uh, lift a backhander wide. Just not really his best here. I mean, he's just such a magician when he's got the puck on his stick, and he just kind of settled for just kind of lifting a backhand shot. And I don't know. It's just a little bit weird. I guess maybe he was trying something a little bit different. Um, maybe, you know, a, a goalie has a big-time game. You know, you're up against a goalie who performs very well. Maybe you feel like you need to go a little bit deeper into the bag of tricks or you have to try something different and go outside of your own comfort zone. Um, but yeah, just, just not the best shot that we've seen from Breadman. And, and, you know, we'll give him a break here because obviously uh, he's having a phenomenal season. It's a shootout, a little bit of a crapshoot anyway. Uh, then Mika, in his shot, second round, uh, he goes slightly to his left, makes just an unreal move on the doorstep, went to his right, pulled it back to his backhand and looked to kind of one-handed in. And Montebo with just an unreal save here. Montebo was basically faked out of his skates, but he stayed with it. You got to give him credit and uh, reach out with his stick and basically just poked it away. I thought for sure this one was going in. Uh, nifty little move by Mika there. And then Lafreniere, he ends up going in the third round. He's got to score to keep the game alive. And, and Lafreniere played very well in this game. Um, He goes wide left, but then he just takes like a pretty normal wrist shot and it just doesn't go in. And I, it looked like he was trying to go five hole and, I don't know, you know, maybe the goalie was in their heads a little bit. Maybe in the case of Lafreniere here, the idea is that, well, he thinks I'm going to do something fancy and try to fake him out, and I'm just going to surprise him with a quick shot here. It's not a bad thought, but again, I just think the Rangers, you know, in these shootouts here, and again, it's a shootout, take it with a grain of salt. We've seen better from certainly Panarin and Lafreniere in shootouts than what we got here. Bottom line, uh, the Rangers lost this game. They still get a point out of it after being down by three goals. And for being honest, I'm not so sure the Rangers really deserve to win this one. So I suppose it's a fair result. You take the one point and you move on. And obviously, we hope the Rangers uh, bounce back in the next one. But we're getting into some details in just a second here. I want to talk a little bit about why I didn't give up hope at all when the Canadians uh, went up 3 nothing in this game. I thought this game was still certainly within the Rangers' reach and that uh, they may have a little bit of a rally uh, in their bones toward the end of this game. And, of course, that ended up happening. They ended up forcing it into overtime and ultimately a shootout. Uh, we'll get into the details of all that in just a second here. First, though, we definitely want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, we just want to go ahead and thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. 
and to just kind of keep everything rolling here, I want to uh, discuss why even down 3 nothing. I thought this game was still very much in reach for the New York Rangers. There, there were a couple of different reasons uh, for this. Um, to begin with, I never really felt like the Rangers were being dominated in this game. Down one nothing after the first period, and then a bad opening to the second period. That one nothing deficit had ballooned to 3 to nothing within three minutes being played of the second period, and not a good start for the second period for the Rangers. But even with all that said, I thought the team that had had the better of play up to this point even though they were down 3 nothing, was the Rangers. The difference here was that the Rangers were basically just kind of shooting themselves in the foot and making mistakes. Basically, all three of the Canadians' first three goals, really their only three goals because they won in the shootout, uh, all the result of the Rangers making some kind of a mistake in their own zone, which is obviously not ideal. But to me, I never thought the Rangers like lacked jump or lacked energy or uh, lacked intensity or um, you know just, just didn't show up to play. It wasn't a situation like that at all. Uh, maybe there were times where they were outworked a little bit. Um, didn't think that that was uh, egregious either, though, if, if that even was the case. Um, so really, I, I thought that they were, um, you know, within striking distance. They uh, they had the forecheck going earlier in the game. They had a really good power play earlier in the game that uh, did everything but score. Uh, some good passing, mostly good goaltending by Quick. And, you know, I felt like Quick could keep them in the game even down 3 nothing, And he indeed did end up doing that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to kind of break down the Montreal goals here, this is basically... I'm not taking anything away from the Canadians. Don't misread it. Don't misunderstand it. I mean, they earn these opportunities, right? But um, the Rangers made mistakes that set up a lot of them. And it started when the Rangers rushed into the offensive zone. Um, this is in the first period. Lafreniere kind of circled the zone, couldn't get the puck on the net. Uh, Trocek with a chance that was turned aside. And the Rangers, again, they're, they're picking it up at this point in the game. They had just had a really good power play, and it's back to 5v5, and the Rangers are swarming. But then the Canadians just kind of score out of nowhere. Uh, Gallagher scored to make it one to nothing. Quick had made a save initially, and then Trocek had a chance to clear the puck, pass up the boards to Panarin. Panarin was along the boards there. Panarin just kind of missed it. The Canadians keep it in. A couple of quick passes. Next thing you know, puck's in the back of the net. And then for the second goal, it was basically the same kind of a deal here. Barclay Goodrow's got an opportunity to get the puck out of the Rangers zone, just not able to do it. Uh, basically tried to lift the puck uh, out of the zone from along the boards there. Montreal keeps it in. The puck is now along the boards, and you've got kind of a two-on-two -two battle going on there. Uh, Goodrow and Lindgren both in there for the Rangers, and the Canadians are able to come away with it. Uh, you've got Adam Fox coming across the ice and making like a sliding play, trying to, you know, break up whatever uh, was going to happen there, whether it was a pass or a shot, but he misses it. Pass is made to Monaghan. Monaghan's in deep right in front of the net there. Uh, Lindgren, to his credit, hustled to get back in position and actually did get a little piece of Monaghan's shot, uh, but unfortunately, he deflected it. Puck kind of flared through the air, ended up in the back of the net, and it's 2 nothing Montreal. So a little bit of a bad break at the end of this play for the Rangers because, you know, Lindgren almost you know, was punished for his hustle here, you know, getting back into position here. And, you know, the puck deflected off of him in a, in a weird way, popped up into the air, and again, just kind of fluttered into the back of the net, 2-0. Um, but really, it should have never come to that. You know, the Rangers shot themselves in the foot initially here by not getting the puck out of the zone and then failing to win a board battle and letting the Canadians basically just skate right away with it, uh, get to a high danger scoring opportunity. And yeah, a bit of a bad break on the shot, but you know what? At that point, it's your own fault that he even uh, came to that situation. So it's 2-0 at that point. Like freaking clockwork, three nothing on the next shift. I don't even know what to say about it at this point. Basically, just take whatever I said about the Rangers' issues and the shift that follows follows a goal from like three episodes ago. Just copy it and paste it here. It's the same thing. I don't even know what else to say about it at this point. It needs to be better. Um, it goes three nothing in the next shift. Armia scores. This is again just two minutes and thirty nine seconds into the second period. So the first period, you're still feeling all right. Yeah, you're down one nothing wasn't perfect, but I thought the Rangers had good jump in their game. There was no reason to think they wouldn't come back and win. But now, just this uh, poor, poor start to the second period. And again, it goes 3 nothing here. Uh, a lot of Rangers were trapped on the ice for a long time, and it really kind of showed. Guys were kind of dragging toward the end, just sort of reaching for the puck. Um, Schneider and Bonino, they were out there. They both had an opportunity to make a play on the puck. Neither one was able to do it, and Armia ends up scoring. And just like that, it's 3 to nothing. Um, but as far as like the mistakes that the Rangers made in this game, honestly, it wasn't just these three goals. Uh, they made a couple of errors uh, in the third period when the game was 3-3. Three, three. They almost threw it away, um, you know, the, this all this hard work that they did um, on a couple of different mistakes that were made. Um, you had Trocek. He had another good game. Um, ended up with a goal and an assist and just went to work with his typical uh, blue-collar style, did Vincent Trocek. But you had a situation here where 
Uh, Trocek had the puck in the Rangers zone, and the Canadians weren't really in on the forecheck or anything, so he goes behind the net, as players often do, to let the rest of their teammates uh, go off for a change. But I think he just kind of assumed that the one Canadian who was in the picture uh, wasn't really going to chase him behind the net, but he did, and that forced Trocek to you know leave the back of the net, come back in front, and there's another Canadian there, and now he's in real trouble. They get the puck away from him, make a quick pass. They're not able to uh, convert on that scoring chance there, but that was almost a disaster. I was glad that didn't happen. You know, Trocek's obviously played well for the Rangers recently. This would have been uh, not part of his career highlight package, that is for sure. But you also had, you know, Jimmy Vesey with uh, about a minute or two to go in the game. Again, the game is tied at this point. He tried like this crazy cross ice pass from along the boards in his own zone, just kind of threw it across the ice. Canadians stole it, got a good scoring chance out of that. And Panarin had done the same thing just before this. So a lot of different instances where the Rangers were just making mistakes and just very uncharacteristically sloppy with the puck just kind of uh, going with what they've been called as kind of hope plays. And the thing is, like, even if you connect on these passes, I mean, yeah, you're you're kind of heading up the ice, and that's good and everything, but it's a very high-risk, low-reward kind of play and uh, just not the kind of thing that we see the Rangers do and not the kind of thing that I think Peter Laviolette is going to be very happy about uh, when he goes and watches the tape on this because that's just not um, how the Rangers want to play. And, um, you know, again, they, they made mistakes that cost them, and they even made a couple of mistakes here that didn't cost them. So it's good that they at least escaped and found their way into overtime. But this goes back to what I was talking about before, a little bit earlier in the episode. Um, you know, the Rangers ended up in overtime, and that's all well and good. They, they get the point out of this. I'm not so sure they even really deserve that with all the uh, the mistakes that they made. But the reason you could argue that they deserved it is the fact that they uh, rallied from three goals down. It's never an easy thing to do. And we're going to break down the comeback that the Rangers made. Um, you know, they, they did make the comeback and ultimately just came up short, but they, they fought all the way back to tie it, at least got the game into overtime, got the game into the shootout and got the one point. So we're going to break down, uh, that part of this game in just a second here. First though, we definitely want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up literally today, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place a $5 bet, that's $150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many ways to win your bets, like live same-game parlay, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. We also want to let everybody know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, so to go ahead and keep everything rolling here, I do want to uh, highlight some of the positives from this game because they were there, uh, not the least of which was obviously the comeback by the Rangers being down 3-0 uh, on the road, coming back and uh, figuring out a way to uh, to get the at least the one point, send it into overtime and the shootout. Uh, the thing I liked about this watching it, though, even down 3-0, the Rangers never really got out of whack too much. They kept playing their game. And again, up to this point in the game, even down 3-0, uh, I still felt like the Rangers had, had overall played well. It's just those those random mistakes that they were making, those costly turnovers that they were making. And you could maybe look at that and say, well, that means they didn't play well. But if you take those out of the equation, I, I think you look at the first, um, you know, honestly, the, the first portions of this game, the first period, and um, good chunks of the second period as well. And I thought the Rangers overall uh, did have the better of play. But we got to highlight a Montreal power play. This occurred with the Habs up. 3 nothing, looking for more. And Jonathan Quick was absolutely fantastic while the Rangers are shorthanded here. He actually ended up making six saves on this power play. I didn't think it was that many, but that's what Sam and Joe said uh, once it was over. And the best of the bunch here came when uh, Slavkovsky got a chance after receiving a pass in the right circle. And Quick made an outstanding glove save moving to his left. Just a great snag there. Probably his best save of the night. And if that goes to 4 nothing there, 
I mean, never say never. Look, the Rangers a couple of years ago, uh, they were down 4 nothing in Montreal, came back and won that game. Just a, a crazy game there. So you never know for sure, but 4 nothing. I mean, that's quite the hole to try to climb out of. But bottom line, big save by Quick there, making the Ranger come back uh, all the more possible. And then, of course, the Rangers, uh, they do get two goals in the second period to knock it back down to 3-2 heading into the third. Uh, you've got... Barkley Goodrow, he ended up with a chance from a very tough angle, was not able to bury it. Uh, Lexi Lafreniere had a opportunity uh, on kind of like a turnaround shot, just kind of turned and fired it at the net. Uh, he was also stopped on a deflection right after this. And then on the next shift, you know, the Rangers are kind of building momentum here, and Trocek is able to score on a deflection. Three to one, uh, Rangers are cycling the, the puck here. They worked it back to Eric Gustafson. Gustafson took the shot. Trocek took care of the rest, uh, deflecting at home. And then... The Rangers cut it all the way down to three to two. You got Vincent Trocek winning a face off in the right circle. Brilliant play here. He basically pushed the puck forward, uh, went forward to get it himself, and then made a quick pass, slid it across the ice to Artemi Panarin on the other side. Panarin immediately hammers it home. I mean, this puck was in the net about one second after the face off had occurred. Uh, just a great play here. And, you know, Trocek and Panarin, they were talking a little bit. They showed uh, this on MSG. They were talking a little bit before the face off happened. And it looks like this is what they were going for. And obviously it worked three to two. So Vincent Trocek just continuing to go to work for the Rangers every single night. Just great stuff all around. And then we had the game time goal. This occurred in the third period. This is where, you know, again, I had that thought where it's like, it's awesome that they came back, but it's like, do they deserve to win this game? You're, you're kind of conflicted a little bit, right? Because they've shown some heart. They've shown some guts coming back, tying the game. They've also made a lot of mistakes in this game. So you're not sure if they really deserve it, but the bottom line, they did tie this game here. I've uh, got Panarin out there with Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider. Um, this is with 11.40 to go in the game. And we've seen Pierre Laviolette do this quite a bit. When the Rangers are in a situation where you know, they're down by a goal, they're trying to get back into it late in the game, he will have Panarin double shift. He'll stay on uh, his own line, Panarin will, and he'll also jump up there with Mika and with Kreider, kind of super stacking the top line, if you will. Um, this is also where uh, Panarin had that errant pass that got intercepted uh, not too long after this. Trocek had that turnover that we were talking about just a short time ago. So again, the Rangers were making a lot of mistakes here, but the play continued after you know both of these near disaster plays by both Panarin and Trocek. The play continues, and you've got uh, VZ and Cooley both applying pressure in there on the forecheck. Uh, VZ basically swung around the boards to, to Fox in deep, and Fox passes back down the boards to VZ. VZ skates it back toward the blue line, passes to Fox, a one-timer. Uh, and they were thinking that maybe Will Cooley had deflected this. He was in front of the net and doing uh, some good work trying to get free, position himself, look for the deflection, possibly look for the screen. Uh, but Fox scored this goal clean. Cooley didn't tip it. 3-3 three to three with about 10.30 to go in the game for Adam Fox, his first goal since the end of October. Obviously, he was hurt for a good chunk of time there, too. Uh, but Fox, nevertheless, breaking a lengthy scoring drought. So, again, um, the Rangers showed a lot of heart here, battled back, got themselves back into the game. And the only other thing I want to talk about here before we call it a day is Brent Othman, because there was kind of some debate about whether he had been benched or not. Um, so obviously, look, Brent Hoffman, very impressive debut against the Blackhawks, uh, was firing the puck at the net. I believe he ended up with five shots on goal, ended up with like three or four hits as well. Hoffman was not very noticeable at all in this game. Uh, part of the reason for that, of course, is the fact that he was only out there for seven minutes and 16 seconds, quite a step down from his debut where I believe he had about 12 minutes or so. Um, he had the two hits in this game, zeros across his stout line other than that, but you know, I think this is kind of a non-story because, yeah, Othman wasn't out there too much in the third period. He only had, I believe it was two shifts in the third period and none after um, about seven minutes or so into the third. But again, I just mentioned part of the reason for this is the fact that Artemi Panarin was double shifting. So that means he's also going to play with Mika and with Kreider. That bumps Blake Wheeler out of that line. So Wheeler moves down the lineup. And Brian Othman, look, it's his second game. It's kind of a wild game between the Rangers and the Canadians. And I, I know there's going to be some people that say, oh, bench Hoffman, take him out of the lineup, or bench this guy, or bench that guy. Just just be patient, all right? Brent Hoffman just got here. Yes, he showed very well in his first game. There's going to be times when a rookie is called up where the training wheels are on a little bit. We saw this with Will Cooley last year. Um, he got up for a handful of games, but never really 
was featured prominently in the Ranger lineup. You know, he only had a handful of minutes pretty much every game that he was out there. Brennan Hoffman, there are better days ahead than this. Uh, again, he wasn't really that noticeable. Hard to do a whole lot when you're barely out there. Uh, I think he only had the puck maybe like once or twice in this game. It'll be all right. Brennan Hoffman uh, is a heck of a player. And if you could even call this a bump in the road, then fine. It, it's a bump in the road. And um, I would imagine in the next game, you know, he'll see the ice a little bit more often. Again, this is a crazy game. And Laviolette just going with his veterans and the guys that have been there and done that rather than, you know, just kind of hoping that Brent Offman, you know, ends up being the hero in this game, uh, which, you know, could happen. But I, I think, you know, based on the way the season has gone so far, Laviolette is going to trust the guys that have kind of been there and done that for him. Uh, at least so far in this campaign. So uh, I figure we could pretty much call it there. If you guys would like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. And a uh, big thank you to everybody for bearing with me. I've been a little bit sick lately. You could probably tell by my voice. So uh, thanks for uh, getting through this episode with me. Really do appreciate it, man. You guys are the best. And um, definitely, if you have not subscribed to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel, you definitely want to do that um, because there are some things that uh, are available exclusively on that channel. And nine out of 10 times, the episode premieres on YouTube before it's available on audio. So do yourself a favor and uh, go subscribe there. And uh, uh, thanks in advance for that. And again, thank you guys as always for tuning in. And I will see you next time.